Alright, I'm here to talk about what I learned about Earl Perry Charlton and his philanthropic ways from the book The Charlton Story by Earl Perry Charlton II and George Winius. Earl Perry Charlton was a successful and very philanthropic entrepreneur. Um, an entrepreneur is someone who devotes time and money and takes risks to both start and manage a business. And an entrepreneur, to me, should also do some sort of philanthropy and... Uh, give back to the community. I would say he well exceeded those expectations. Um, it may surprise some people that he actually left high school before he graduated and started successful five and ten cent stores in Fall River and also co-founded the F.W. Woolworth Company, all while remaining philanthropic. Uh, Charlton was the most philanthropic of his partners. Woolworth, one of his partners, only used his fortune to benefit himself and his family. He purchased an unnecessary 60-floor building for over $13 million and left the majority of his money to Barbara Hutton, his granddaughter. She spent around $50 million or so and later died a lonely poor woman. Uh, Charlton, however, had bigger and better plans for his fortune. When he died, he left an estate of $32 million and almost $3 million saved for charity alone. While he was alive, he gave away at least half that much money. He showed he valued social responsibility and giving back to the community that made him into the successful entrepreneur he was. Some organizations that Charlton, Charlton donated to were the Truesdale Hospital, where he donated around half a million dollars to add a new surgery wing, purchase new, better technology, and hire more employees. He donated also to the District Nursing Association, the Central Congregational Church, the Boys Club, the YMCA, the Home for the Aged, the Children's Home, St. Vincent's Orphan Home, the Ninth Street Nursery, and St. John's Day Nursery. Charlton got very involved in the war effort by donating his yacht to the Coast Guard and supporting both the French and U.S. troops with money during the war. He didn't do it for the fame or the recognition, but because he was very patriotic and wanted to do the right thing. Um... He raised about $2 million as the national chairman of the Coolidge Fund, which was later donated to the Clark School for the Deaf. And he donated about $110,000 of that money himself for the charity. Uh, this proved that he was really in it to make a difference for people and really cared about their well-being. Um... He left a hefty will for not only his family, but other charitable purposes in the future. He left a sizable education fund for the Tufts University Medical College, which still exists today. But the one charity that affects not only myself, but other students in the business program here at UMass Dartmouth is his donation to the Bradford Durfee Textile School. Uh, the Durfee Textile School has gone through many transitions from changing to the Southeastern Massachusetts Technological Institute to SMU and to uh, what it is today, the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. Um, the 25 grants that were uh, grants that were originally put into the Durfee Textile School Trust was later uh, recovered and $80,000 was added to the endowment for the uh, scholarship, which is now worth up to $100,000 and awards seven students with $1,000 a year. Uh, Charlton also left money to his family like any other man would. But unlike Woolworth's family, the Charlton family continued Earl Perry Charlton's legacy. Earl Perry Charlton II... Charlton's grandson granted $3 million to the UMass Dartmouth College of Business, which is now known as the Charlton College of Business. Um, Charlton gave to charity not only while he was alive, but thought about the future when he wouldn't be around, leaving millions of dollars for future charitable purposes. He, he was a true philanthropist. Aside from the fact that Earl Perry Charlton was actually a nice guy, it was clear that Charlton gave back to the community because it made him the successful entrepreneur and person he was. Without a doubt, I would follow his footsteps if I were to become an entrepreneur. Personally, I think philanthropy should be included in the definition of an entrepreneur.
because being an entrepreneur also means to get involved in the community that gives back to you. It reflects greatly on an entrepreneur as a person to be involved in something charitable that isn't related to their business, much like Earl Perry Charlton did. He is a great example of a truly successful and hardworking philanthropic entrepreneur.